Everyone will live in hope that the trial will go their way. And then there's that dawning realisation that it hasn't. You're going to prison. Some of them are still in shock that they've been sentenced. And the first time you came in here, you just never forget. It's scary. My heart was in my mouth. I was shaking. I don't think you realise what the prisoners actually go through behind closed doors. People say it's a holiday camp, but it's not. Ready for your bending and tools, guys. They just count the days down till they get out. Buzzing for it. Buzzing to get out. One for liberation. I feel like going on your hands and knees and kissing the pavement. Thornton Vale is Scotland's only all-female prison. I like it when they come out and they're all that warm way, eh? Uh, see when it's dead cold and you think, oh, I could do it, come back to the laundry and just wrap it round you. <laughs> <laughs> At the prison laundry, towels, bedding and clothing are washed for up to 309 inmates every day. <laughs> Among the laundry team is Cheryl. Do the sheet probably case. Do the sheet and then wrap it up for them. Right. About to be released, Cheryl is coming to the end of her time working in the laundry. You got it, doll. I have doll. All right, doll. Cheers, doll face. It's Cheryl's last 24 hours in prison. I don't want to be a millionaire. I don't want a big Ferrari or, you know, I don't want to win the lottery. I just want a normal life with me and my girls. Woke up this morning and I honestly thought I was going to be sick. I really did, like, just so nervous. In the beginning, you try not to think about getting out because it just seems so far away. But as you get to your last couple of weeks, I'll count in my head when it is, um, like how many days it is to go, and then a few minutes later, I'll count again as if it's somehow miraculously going to change. They end up with so much stuff, eh? Cheryl was convicted for assault and a breach of bail. It's all your paperwork and all your letters that people send you and... Like, I've not got a lot of clothes or anything like that. I had a head on problem when I was outside. And so when I first come in, I was coming off the heroin, but also the methadone was still coming out of my system as well. If you'd have seen me then, I mean, my, I was like six and a half stone. And my face was like really all all sucked in, I was pure white, you know, I'm going like that yellow, grey colour because I was, I would be in sick, you know, constantly. You know, all you can think about is, you know, how ill you are feeling and trying to eat something. Oh no, it's just, I wouldn't wish it on my worst day anyway. My demand was for three weeks. You start feeling better after like the first two weeks. You know, you're still not 100% because I've been doing drugs a lot of years, you know, I've been doing, doing them for 11 years now. I said to my mum, I need to go to the jail to get clean. I kept trying to do it outside, you know, um, and I could just never manage it. You know, I would get a couple of days in it and I would be too ill and I would, I would end up going and, going and getting a bag of heroin. At court, Cheryl was given her first prison sentence of seven months. When I got sentenced, my mum just said, Cheryl, you were better off getting a sentence in. Now that I've had, you know, these three months away and clean my programmes I do in here, they set you up for, for getting out and they teach you, firstly, like what your triggers are in the first place, you know, different ways of thinking and different coping mechanisms. In here, being able to be honest about it, you know, and not having a lie anymore. It's kind of like a weight off your shoulders when you're able to get it all out and, and talk about it and, and nobody judge you for it as well. 
if I'd have gotten out after Miramand, I think I'd ended up right back on it. It wasn't long enough. My head still wasn't in, in the right place to be getting out. Having spent time in the prison's rehabilitation programmes, Cheryl reveals why her drug addiction began. I had a little boy when I was when I was 18, um, and he and he was born prematurely, and, and he passed away. Um, and I'd, I started drinking um, just at the funeral, and I just I didn't stop. I stopped going to work, and you start to kind of hang about with people that aren't going to work and are drinking every day and, you know, have drug problems. By the age of 18, Cheryl was a heroin addict, a habit she kept secret, even from her new husband. I fell pregnant really early on with my husband and I was already a heroin addict. But he didn't know that for a long time. Even throughout the pregnancy, after I'd had my daughter, he didn't know. Um, and then he found out. After several years together and a second child, Cheryl's marriage finally broke down. But her continued drug addiction meant she was not allowed to see or contact her children. Those about were saying that I wouldn't get my children on my own. In my eyes, there's no alternative. I just knew that I was going to lose everything. And that's what I'm in for, if I had attacking them for it. So, but I'm so glad that I'm out of that relationship now. Now I'm at the end of my sentence and looking back, this has done me the world of good. There will be some women who come into prison because they know they will be able to detox, they know they can get fit, they know they can eat well, they can do all of that. Would you like to see unit two, Mum? That would be great, yeah, thank you very much. Okay. How many is upstairs now? Hello there, you all right? So in a sense, for some women, prison is literally a lifesaver. Hello, Jodie. Hello. Offered a job in the pantry this morning, yeah. she starts today. Oh, good. Aye. Good. Well, you need to do... Um, rehas training and things. I've done that. We've done, done all that. that. Uh, yeah, done that. We tried the tough stuff in the 1980s and the 1990s. Treating people harshly doesn't work because no matter what we do, their lives outside are often worse. Morning. Morning. How are we doing? Good, yeah, okay. how are you? How's things busy? Yeah, it's been quite busy. Yeah, it's well, what have you had? had 13 courts go out and we've had three labs. What I would say to people who think prison is too easy is, what kind of person do you want coming out to live next door to you when they're released? Do you want someone who's been locked up for 23 hours a day? Or do you want someone coming out who's had the chance to see that a different life is possible? Because that's what we're trying to do in modern prisons. During her time in prison, Cheryl was allowed to contact her children again. I send the colouring things to the kids and I'll get them to colour them in and, and send them back and then I can put them up on my wall and all my pictures and stuff and my wee letters and that that write back. So it just makes the place look more, more homely than, rather than just the bare walls. <laughs> what do you use to stick them? Toothpaste. <laughs> Toothpaste, they stick them up, yep. That's a jail trick. <laughs> God, look at the state of it in. Prison staff had spoke with my social worker and said, you know, how well I've been doing and I've been attending all my classes and my programmes and stuff, um, which went a long way. With so she said, I can see the girls when I get out, and that was just a massive, you know, a, a massive motivator and just made me so much more positive. I'm going to keep that. That's like some of the stuff we do, like relapse prevention, your triggers, and so I'm going to keep that, yeah. In the beginning, it was like, am I doing this off or nothing? Is she not going to let, still not going to let me see them when I get out? And, and then when she said, no, you know, I'm, I'm so proud of what you're doing. And yeah, you can see them when you get out. So I'm just, oh my God, so happy, so excited. I just can't wait to 
grab them and cuddle them and, and smell them and, you know, it'll oh, just be amazing. <laughs> Hey. It's Cheryl's last night in prison. Hey, ladies. Her cell door is locked for the last time. Hey, ladies, mate. This will definitely be my last time in prison. No, no intention of, of coming back here. I'll always be grateful for, you know, the, the workers that I've worked with in here. See you later, honey. Take care. Some of the prison staff, you get really quite close with them. You tell them things that, you know, you wouldn't normally speak to people about. So what's the plans? Bye, lunch. Here we come. <laughs> I can't wait to get my life back, you know. Drugs take away everything from you, everything. Hope you're uh, uh, working that. Um, oh, def that. Aye, definitely. That's the main thing, right, just staying away from the cat. Right, are you all there? Right, definitely, Jules, eh? Definitely. Right, money first. Mm -hmm. You're taking £129 mm -hmm. out with you, right? So I just need mm -hmm. to get a wee signature. I've been at this for 11 years now, you know. It's a choice that I'm making and I need to make better choices for myself, but also for my children and my family. Oh. Mm. Nervous? Mm-hmm. Be been shaking all morning. It's been a big part of my life, you know. But I've got two beautiful little girls and they deserve better. I deserve better as well. God, it feels weird being outside. <laughs> into Berlin the first day and it was the sheer size of the halls and the noise when you walk in. For us it was the best kept secret in the prison service because nobody knew what Berlin was like unless you'd actually been here. And to walk in and look up and see four floors all working at the same time with all those prisoners it was just amazing. One of the first things was the Berlini smell. It doesn't matter how many times you scrub the place, it doesn't matter how much disinfectant you use, there is that distinctive smell. I think it's just ingrained into the bricks. I could be stood in a supermarket queue or at the bar in a pub and that smell just hits you in the back of the throat and you go, you look around because you think somebody's been in Berlin. <laughs> it is Chris's final 24 hours in prison. I already knew I'd done something fucking extremely bad, but when they were telling me, obviously it was worse.
There are people's eyes in my criminal, but mine I'm not. No stole I have found there, I've no, no violence was involved, nothing like that, so no. Because of what I'm in for is obviously drink driving. So you're going to fall if you keep again. Chris was given a 28-month sentence for drink driving and theft of vehicle. But this was not his first conviction for drink driving. Going in front of a judge, third, fourth time doing it. You deserve everything you get. You only deserve to be hit with a tap whack, which I accept. I went to the van and tried to drive back to where I was going, but it just didn't happen. I turned into this dead end. And that's when I stopped. Because obviously I had to. But if that didn't happen, I'd have been likely to smashed it. The same two officers who pursued me, they came in and interviewed me. Once I was listening in this back sober, you're fucking shitting yourself. Put everybody's life in danger, which they say I deserve to be here. I'm not fucking denying it. So, but it's done. There's no. I'm not going to dwell on it. When you have a decent prisoner, you, you will always say, I'd rather I'd have a flat full of guys like him. So if I could get 82 of them on my flat, I'd be quite happy. He's very quiet. Doesn't chap on his door. He's not always scratching, as we put it, for something. He's a, a little bit of an enigma, is our Chris. Chris works one of his last shifts at the prison barbers, a paid and privileged position. I went for a haircut one day and asked if he was looking for any body to cut hair. And just so happened he was at that time. He gave me a box and asked me to show my haircut. First, obviously. And they weren't the best, but there's times when it's probably one of the best in there. Isn't it? Are you going to cut the hair on the outside? The opportunity is there if I don't get work, but I need to go out and earn money. So when you jab it, obviously it's going down. You see it starting to spike here because it's starting to thin it. Marifa. So I think the gap in the wages between roofing and hairdressing is probably big. <laughs> That's probably one of the reasons why I won't be cutting hair. It is 9 p.m. and Chris's last lockup. After 13 months in prison, it is the morning of Chris's release. Same flat. Oh, can you send any elaborations, please? Okay. Chris is being released from prison six weeks early. Tagged. Oh, but still under their spell. Yeah. He will spend the final weeks of his sentence on a home detention curfew, or HDC liberation. I'm still living on my life. It's seven o'clock, you're in the house. Obviously, weekends I can't go out, socialise or whatever, but it's only for six weeks. We have two types of liberations in Berlin. We have standard liberations, where people have come to the end of their sentence, and we have HDC, home detention curfew liberations. People would call that a tag, because they wear the electronic tag on their ankle. These guys are not as excited as the normal liberations, because as much as they're getting out, they know they're wearing that Gucci bracelet on their ankle. Yes. 
Alright, best big man. Yeah, sure. And they've got to be at home between seven and eight and seven in the morning. It's the sunshine. It's basically releasing the pressure on the prisons um, by allowing people to serve out a small portion of their sentence at an address that's been designated for them. If Chris breaches the tag, he will be returned to prison to serve the remainder of his sentence. If I was to commit another offence, I would be straight back. My lifestyle outside isn't my crime. So, it's no, it doesn't make any difference to me. As long as I don't obviously drink and drive, which I, will, I'll, I won't be. I'm here for two phones and some stick up of stamps. You get that done at the gate. Is this your last time? Aye, I hope so. Obviously, I don't want to be back. I don't want to put my family in that fruit again. At the start, I didn't phone them. Yeah, I didn't phone them for three months. No, well, I knew, obviously, I'd been lifted. Done me without crying again. But I just made it too ashamed to phone them. Obviously, explain to them, I've done it again. People love you and you love them. It's hard. It's, it's harder for people outside. It's not hard for me. It's hard for them. Greenock is a top security prison. Fence, garnet wire, cameras. That is basically what you see on the TV. It must be really daunting coming into a prison. Even coming to work in a prison for the first time is daunting for people. You see people come in, they've got a swagger, try to really pretend to be something or not. Other times you'll see people that are genuinely afraid. And it's just saying to them, listen, you want to come in here and you want to be treated fairly, be fair to the staff, the staff will be fair to you. It is Nathan's last 24 hours in prison. As long as I'm taking my medication properly, I don't need to go running around chasing the dragon. Some kids in here make the cell like a teenager would make the room. They personalise it and individualise it, whatever. Could have covered it in, in my own drawings, but I just thought, don't want to make this place a home because I don't intend on seeing it again, ever. <laughs> it was just something really stupid. It was after dark uh, and I was uh, under the influence of depressants and for that reason they, they took me in and charged me with it. I was carrying a pair of nung trucks they were actually practice nunchucks, a piece of dowling with foam wrapped around them, held together with masking tape. They said an offensive weapon, and, but you couldn't really have hurt anyone with them. I do have four previous convictions for offensive weapons. At the end of the day, it's down to a sheriff, and he was looking at it like that, where, well, you've had sort of three strikes, so jail. Hi, please. No life, chat. Arrested carrying a martial arts weapon while under the influence of drugs, Nathan was convicted for the possession of offensive weapons. When I was given the sentence, 80 days, there was 
yeah, kind of dumbfounded. Can't believe that. But you soon rapidly accept the situation. I mean, um, oh, that looks healthy. I suppose what was going through my head, well, yeah, was how did I ever let it get to this point anyway? Okay, number 12, your time is up. Let's go. Prison officer Charlie works inside the protection unit for vulnerable prisoners. See you later. The protection unit is not just for prisoners who've committed a certain type of offence, paedophiles, rapists. It's not like that. It can be boys in the, the protection unit who are, have got enemies in the hall, they've got enemies outside. Yes, it's hard at times. When you know some of the types of crimes that people are in for, we are fathers, mothers as well, and it does have an impact on us, but through our training and being professional, that's how we, we deal with it. Now, Nathan was a prisoner who was in the mainstream, but ended up in protection because of another prisoner taking a bit of pressure off himself, and he's brought Nathan's name up. <laughs> and due to that, other prisoners turned against Nathan when really they shouldn't have. Then after a few days, there was rumours spread about him that, were, that weren't true, uh, and he had to ask for protection. Nathan and the other prisoner had fought on the outside, a grudge that was brought inside the prison. He proceeded to offer whoever Stuck a slash across my face, I did, you know, a load of free drugs or whatever. Um, as soon as I heard that, I thought, well, now, because someone will do it. I just thought, now, I'll, I'll, I'll go on protection. I think the most scary thing about having enemies within a prison is you don't know where it's going to come from. Actually, the, the unknown must be quite terrifying. I think that's where the paranoia would really start to kick in. I would say once he came in and settled down, he was a lot more relaxed. So many kids in here that have big slashes down their faces from you know, people embedding razor blades in their toothbrushes or whatever. You know, I'd rather not, you know. I mean, I know it's only a face, but I quite like it. Two minutes and go for your dinner once they're back, right? It is really important to have a, a protection unit. There is from them that will sustain personal injury. They can be stabbed, slashed, scalded, attacked. And something that's really changed prisons for the better has been the cameras. I can't really remember the last time there's been a slashing or a stabbing at Greenock. But going back years ago, it was a regular occurrence because staff can't watch everything but the cameras are everywhere. Outside exercise. As a child, Nathan was recognised but never fully diagnosed to be hyperactive, a condition known today as ADHD. You can still learn, but you, you don't tend to learn from mistakes you make. We'll just get through the process here. I could sit down and read a textbook and learn, but I couldn't learn from mistakes. You've smart, Charles. In some ways, it's a shame it took until I was 40 for it to be diagnosed um, properly. If you didn't have AJ, did you think you would have ended up? I would have got on at school. So I wouldn't have gotten into trouble. I wouldn't have given up. I would have ended up going to university. Having said that, if I could roll the clocks back, I don't think I'd change anything because I like who I am. I'm not a bad human being. I go through life trying to cause as little chaos as possible. I've thought a lot about how I ended up reoffending and how I can avoid reoffending in the future. My offence happened because I'd only been taking my meds five days a week and using diazepam to help me sleep. So I was, you know, breaking laws straight away because I'm buying diazepam on the streets. What are you like without your meds? Um, really daft. 
Impulsive, uh, will do things and then think about them. Even if I know that thing is against the law. I, I can't concentrate or focus on pretty much anything. Here I've been able to take my meds seven days a week. And actually, I can cope with taking this stuff, so I don't know why I hadn't done it out there. It's Nathan's last night in prison. After 40 days in prison, it's the morning of Nathan's release. See you later, man. See you later, Lucky. <laughs> I'm actually quite glad that, um, that I was sent to prison and that I was able to see life on the inside. Take it even the hair cut before. Aye. Yeah, for long. <laughs> made me want to never come back again. Oh, it's your first operation on his way up. Oh, I'll pass you up. I actually thought that um, prisons would be full of, you know, evil people. Thank you. All right. People that were bad genuinely forgot how to love and ended up with hearts filled with hate. The kids in here, like, I describe this place as a zoo, being full of children and animals. Just go right through, doors open. That's the first. I think when you send someone to jail, they're going to go one way or the other. Don't turn that on and turn it. It's like making mind up time. Do you want to be? A complete career criminal. So that's a total. Thank you. Thank you. Or do you want to sort of pull yourself together, if you like, and uh, and wrap it? You know. It's your first time in prison, yeah. 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 Nathan's definitely not a regular face, and he's not the, the type of prisoner I'd go about on the Friday and back on Monday because Nathan has got a better, he's got structure to his life outside. And having that bit of structure, I think, keeps a lot of people out of prison. If they've got a good family connection as well. Uh, my sister's picking us up, taking us back to hers. I think she was worried that if I just went straight back home, I'd end up in a pub and right. doing right. daft things. So. Well, that's... What are you looking forward to the most when you get out? Um, well, my ma was growing strawberries. <laughs> and uh, I missed out on the, the, the actual harvest, because I was in here. But she has made loads of strawberry jam. So, um, yeah, eating some nice strawberry jam, going for a long walk. Um, uh, generally being liberated. What's your full name? What scared me the most about jail is that it's not hard. It's, you know, you're not put to hard labour or anything like that, you know. Um, but the fact that I, you know, don't mind being in jail. You know, I don't want to not mind about being in jail. Oh, Lovely. Yeah. All right, cheers, Mark. And yeah, I thought about how, how best to avoid it. And the answer isn't not to get caught. <laughs> it's just not to do it. <laughs> and if I end up back in here, it's no one's fault but mine. Thank you. Another thing about Berlin is you get used to 
the place and having to be all things to all men. I've never had a shift drag on in Berlin. From the minute you walk in, the minute you walk out, you're on your feet. It's constant. Effectively, people have said to me, you know, why is it so busy? 76. Well, it's very simple. I've got 80 plus children to look after. There's your co-pilot. And they all want the same thing at the same time. It's a busy afternoon of admissions at Berlini's reception. The manager's out just now for one minute. We'll shortly. I'll let him know if you want to see him, okay? Right? Okay, just settle down there. Yeah, hopefully, you get out. The main moment who deals with it's after next week. There's nobody in here that's fucking get a clue what they're doing. I was actually surprised when I walked back in and seen him. I'd been on holiday and I thought, you got out. Eight days after his release, Chris is readmitted to prison. I contacted G4S, uh -huh. which I'm told today. I've contacted Barney, uh -huh. spoke to somebody, thinking everything's all right, and then we both have to Can I stop it? Fucking hang on. Right, okay. We had been notified that he failed to comply with the condition of his licence. And I don't know whether that is what you've got. That is what it is. You're supposed to have done. I don't know. I think you can bear with us in a way. All right? No bother. Just trying to get your act together. Okay. Because you're going to be a bit upset. Which is understandable. I'm raging. I swear to God, I'm raging. Reaching the tag is... It can happen for the simplest of things. You could be ten minutes late back. You could be caught in traffic. Somebody comes back and who you know, and you go, why, why are you back? Oh, boss, you'll never, un you'll never believe what happened to me. And I hear so many excuses and so many stories about why these guys are, are back, and it's never their fault. It's never ever their fault. It's always someone else's fault. Chris has demanded to see the prison manager to find out why he was arrested. My understanding is, over the weekend, some domestics happened there. There was an argument on that. I'm, 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 I'm not really um, too concerned about the details of the domestic, but that then led to a breach of your licence conditions because you did not then report to where you should have been at the time you should have done. Now, that's not up for debate. You're still, although you're out in licence conditions, you're still convicted. I we have that. to, we have to bring you in here because you're at large if you're not at the address you were supposed to be at. But and, there, and, even and the one out there, it wasn't at large. It was missing. It's, it's the same thing, but, but it's a plain words. You're missing. You're at large. You're out there. You shouldn't be out because you're not what you're supposed if I to be. Really wanted to breach this tag. It would be off my leg. I wouldn't still no. have it on my leg. You I wouldn't have been continuing the conditions last night. It was conditions that was out of my control. You breached the task. Jesus Christ, man. You breached it. Following an argument with his mother, Chris had left the house. Because he was not at the registered address within the set times, he was considered in breach of tag. It is annoying when you work so hard with them to try and make sure that they get out and stay out. And you think you've had some input or some influence on him, and then for something so stupid, he comes back in again. What happened to you, then? <sighs> to be honest, I'm being fucking fucked over in a big way. Right. Just obviously annoyed that I'm back for just something that could have been dealt with a lot better with the management wise. He knows he's got to do the last five weeks. Um, he knows he's an idiot for coming back. Yeah, I'll just get through this week and get it done. Just sign off me, I don't mind you, don't trust me. Yeah? I've been done just the other week. Just. Don't get the break. Can you be your name? Chris. 
but he's he's got to just get on with it and try and stay out of trouble. At the end of the day, it's, it's happened. You can dwell on it, you can get angry about it, you can shout about it, or just put your head down and get on with it, which that would be my choice, because if I snap, then I'll just snap. Very lucky that the instructor and the, and the hairdressers thought so highly of him and the barbers, and gave him his old job back. So he's he's not sitting behind his door all day long. He's back working and he's earning a few pounds, and you know hopefully it will keep him busy and his time will go quickly. Yeah, you, man. He's not got my fucking <laughs> <laughs> One of the best. I'm <laughs> shocked because, you know, even they know that I didn't do it in the line. I mean, it was, it's not as if I you know, broke the tag deliberately and cut it off and committed a crime or whatever. I'm not to be here. I wasn't working then, there was a lot more time in the cell dwelling on it, and then somebody could just say a ring of tea. Are you away? Come on. Come on. My update will be here before I get answers, so just need to keep my head down for five weeks and continue just the way my day is normal. And cheer up a bit. If I was to say I hope to never to see every prisoner again, then I'd be out of a job very quickly. But you do, when you get prisoners like Chris, for example, it's certainly a lot easier now for prisoners to engage and stay out than it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. So hopefully we won't see them again, but um, never say never.